Let's get started on our healthy weight loss fall food prep by prepping to roast these delicious mix and match fall ingredients. Well, you can mix and match these prepped ingredients to form any meal you like. Stay tuned toward the end because I'm gonna show you three days worth of breakfast, lunches, and dinners that you can use with these mix and match ingredients. I'm gonna start with cutting the stems off of these Brussels sprouts and having them. I'm gonna throw them into this bowl here so we can give them a good rinse. And Brussels sprouts are probably my favorite fall and winter vegetable. After we roast these, they're going to be amazing for both breakfast, lunch, and dinner bowls, as well as an excellent side for our turkey or chicken. All right, so first I'm gonna rinse these off and then I'm going to add them to our baking sheet. All right, we're gonna set that aside because I'm going to fit the cauliflower on the other side of this pan. All right, now we're gonna prep our cauliflower. I do this by trying to rip some parts of the stem off first, just so I can get in there. And then what I'm gonna do is try to get down in there, kind of making a circle around it carefully. That way some of our florets kind of just fall off of the stem. And then I kind of see which ones I can easily pull apart. Once again, I'm gonna throw our veggies in a bowl so we can rinse them. Who doesn't love some delicious roasted veggies? All right, we're gonna add these to the pan with the Brussels sprouts. I still do like to try to keep them separated so that we can separate them into their own containers once they are roasted. And now since this video is for weight loss, your healthy fats with your olive oil are gonna be very important but we don't wanna overdo it because olive oil is very calorically dense. So the easiest way to make sure we go light on the olive oil is to get a spray olive oil. And we can kind of just spray it on there. So if you want them to look nice and golden crisp, but not, you know, maybe get a little bit of that appearance of being burnt <laughs> from the oven, you might wanna to toss it a little bit. Make sure we're getting oil on, on all the sides. We're gonna add some salt and pepper to this, and then I'm gonna set it aside while I prep the other ingredients. So we're gonna do that with all the, the vegetables that we throw in the oven. We're gonna oil them, and just some light salt and pepper. And now we will prep our sweet potatoes. First, you're gonna to have to just cut some of the stubby ends off to make it easier to peel. All right, and then we're gonna peel these. I'm gonna throw this in the bowl to rinse before I dice it. I'm aiming for the garbage can, but I'm actually getting peels all over the kitchen. I swear, I've got four kids, but I might be the messiest one. We're gonna give those a good rinse. All right, so now we're gonna dice these up and you're gonna wanna make sure your knife is nice and sharp. I'm just like, I very carefully do that. And now that you've halved it, you'll wanna put it on the flat side so that we can steady the potato here. And I'm just gonna make some cuts both ways to dice it up. As big of a dice as you'd prefer, these we're gonna add to our various different bowls. And obviously the smaller the cut though, the quicker it's going to, to cook. Okay. Now I already pre-greased this pan so we don't have to toss it around much. It is kind of a busted pan, so sorry for that, but it still works. One of my favorite recipes that's on my blog, it's the roasted sweet potato and beet salad recipe. It's really excellent. I just had it the other day. It's really nutritious and tasty. So stay tuned for that toward the end of this video. All right, now we're gonna prep our beets. Beets will often come with the greens, but I happen to be able to get a few extra ones in this bag of beets. Um, if you do have the greens, feel free to chop those off and use them in smoothies, salads, saute them. They're highly nutritious. And it makes for some great color in our beet hummus that we're gonna make later in this video. The deep red pigment from them is gonna look a little unsightly on this cutting board, just in time for Halloween. I really love beets, so I'm gonna prepare as many as I can. And if you're gonna make the beet hummus with us, you're gonna need about a half cup of beet, which is gonna be maybe close to one small beet. As you can see, that, that pigment on my hands, which is why it's going to be important to wash your hands just following this and 
your cutting board. I can't emphasize enough that if you don't clean off your cutting board, it will stain. All right, we're gonna give these a quick rinse as well. All right, and while I was able to peel off some of the stubby ends, I'm gonna cut the rest of them off and throw them on the other side of our sweet potato pan. If you don't like any of that color bleeding into the sweet potato, you can put it on a separate pan because that will pigment anything that it touches. So I'm cutting up enough for those suggested recipes, but you can feel free to do as much as you think you can consume. I believe most of this stuff lasts about three to five days and most of it you can freeze as well. All right, so there we got our pan of sweet potato and beet. I'm gonna spray this lightly with olive oil, some salt and pepper. If you're watching your sodium for blood pressure reasons or anything else, just watch the amount of salt you put on your veggies. A little bit of salt helps bring out that flavor. All right, so now that we have all of that prepped, I'm gonna get the oven preheated at 350 degrees and we're gonna prep our turkey or chicken. While turkey reminds me more of the fall season, and I assume that's probably what you're gonna wanna get for this meal prep, I ran to the store today and they didn't have a defrosted turkey, so I'm gonna be working with chicken. Regardless, it's gonna be great in your recipes and with the seasoning blend, so just go with whatever you like and whatever you can find. Next, we're gonna to mix together our seasonings for our chicken or turkey rub. All right, add salt to a bag or small bowl. Then we're gonna add black pepper, add thyme, add rosemary, add sage, add garlic powder, and mix. Okay, so if you're vegan or vegetarian, you might wanna skip this part altogether. And for you, I'd recommend just making some extra beans and quinoa when we get to that part because those will be your main sources of protein. You can also try some tofu or tempeh with some of these recipes, but the beans and the quinoa are gonna go the best with most of the recipes I'm going to suggest toward the end of this video. Getting protein with each meal is gonna be especially important for a weight loss goal as it's gonna help you retain that lean muscle mass while you are losing weight and it'll also help you feel more satiated between meals. So we're gonna add about a couple tablespoons of olive oil, about one and a half on the back side and another half on the other side. We're gonna brush that on and then we're gonna rub in the seasonings on both sides. So there are 50 different ways to make a whole turkey or chicken. I am going to use a broiler because I like mine a little crispy. All right, now that you've got your oil and your rub on there, I'm going to put this breast side down and I'm gonna stick it in the oven. Some say it takes about 20 minutes per pound. I found that it took a little less for me, but the only way you're gonna be able to tell if it's done is if the internal temperature inside the thigh is at least 165 degrees. All right, so now I'm gonna add all of this to the oven and we're gonna check on this frequently. So if you find that these vegetables on top are browning too quickly, you can swap them out. And toward the end, we might move the chicken toward the top so that it can get a little more crispy. So that is gonna take a really long time, to be honest. And if you have any extra time, you can watch your favorite TV show and maybe you can sip on some wine or kombucha while you wait. All right, now we're gonna prep our beans and quinoa. You can prep all of these according to package instructions or you can use a rice cooker and pressure cooker like I'm going to use. I actually already prepped some chickpeas yesterday in the pressure cooker, so those are ready to go. Low sodium canned chickpeas are totally cool if you wanna skip prepping one of these beans. So I'm gonna prep these in the pressure cooker. Okay, and we're gonna need two cups of made quinoa for our chickpea and kale soup recipe. And we wanna have some extra for our bowls as well. So I'm gonna do two cups of dried quinoa, but really that's only because that's all I can fit in my small rice cooker. If you can do more than that, then that is awesome. And now we're gonna prep all of our raw ingredients. If you wanna do the overnight chia oats parfait, we're gonna put half of a cup of old fashioned oats in each of these containers. Now a quick note on carbs for weight loss. Carbs are not 
bad. You just want to try to aim for complex carbohydrates and eat them in moderation. They're actually very nutritious and they're going to help you stay satiated between meals. All right, now we're going to add a tablespoon of chia seeds to each of these. Chia seeds are an amazing source of healthy fats, which are great to get a little bit of at each meal for weight loss and for general health. They're also going to keep you satiated as well as it's great for brain health and heart health, among many other things. I also like that this chia seed is going to make our parfait more gelatinous like a pudding. All right, so once you have the oats and chia seed in there, you're gonna to wanna to add your preferred type of milk to each one. We're gonna put the lids on and shake to combine these. Remove the lids. We're gonna add the Greek yogurt to the bowl and add two scoops of vanilla powder and then mix the protein powder and the yogurt. If your protein powder doesn't mix well into the yogurt, you can always add a tablespoon or two of water. And once that's mixed, we're gonna divide it evenly between the two mason jars. All right, and then we'll set these aside because we're gonna add the apple cinnamon and the pumpkin spice to it here in a bit. Some of the produce you can certainly get already chopped and or washed off. You might wanna just buy these unchopped and prep them yourself. Now we're gonna prep carrots, onions, and garlic for our two different soups. Each soup has an equal amount of carrots, onions, and garlic, so we can cut all of these up and then split them into two bags. Because I've already got one prepped from yesterday, I am going to do half as much of the carrots, onions, and garlic um, and put them into another bag. Basically, this is three carrots, an onion, and three cloves of garlic. All right, and I'm just gonna dice these into rounds. About a quarter inch or smaller. All right, and then dice your onion. All right, and then we're gonna wanna prep three cloves of garlic. You can get them pre-shelled or even pre-diced. I just like the flavor straight from the head. All right, and then you're gonna wanna add all of this to a bag. Okay, and at any point in the week, you can throw together these easy soups, or you can even make the soups the day of prep. Okay, now we're gonna dice up an onion and some mushrooms. You're gonna be able to use these in a quick scramble, one of which I will show you later. And I am already starting to cry. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna add these to the bag. I am sorry if my eyes are red. I swear it was just the onion. <laughs> now we're gonna start our apple slaw. Now you can shred white and purple onions as well as carrots if you'd like, but I know I'm having you guys chop a lot of stuff today, so I just went ahead and bought the coleslaw mix pre-made. We're gonna add this to a bowl and we'll set it aside till we prep our apple. All right, and you're also gonna wanna prep three stalks of celery. I actually already did this last night. You basically just wanna dice it up. This is gonna be for one of our soups as well. Okay, now we're gonna prep lots of apples. They go excellent with our fall favorites. We're gonna add one to our chia oat parfait and my roasted beet and sweet potato salad. We're also gonna add some to the apple coleslaw, but we will do that in a minute. All right, you'll wanna add as much of that as you can to one of the mason jars with maybe a little room to, to stir it. All right, and for a pumpkin spice one, we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of pumpkin puree. And you'll top this with a half a teaspoon apple pie spice, a half a teaspoon of pumpkin spice, and then you can seal it and store it, and it'll store pretty well for up to a few days. And when you wanna eat it, you just mix it up and it's great for all right, now we're gonna shred these apples to add to our apple slaw. You wanna do one green one, that's to add a little bit of sour to our slaw, and then I do two sweet red ones. And I like to use Gala, but Pink Lady would also be good, and maybe some other types of apples. And I just use a cheese grater. We're gonna have to be careful not to, to get our fingers in here, and we're just kinda have to go around the core. And you're gonna wanna add that to your coleslaw mix. All right, to finish up the apple slaw, we're gonna add Greek yogurt, mayonnaise, spicy mustard, honey, apple cider vinegar, and salt and pepper to taste. All right, and you can add sunflower seeds in here if you'd like, and 
sugar-free cranberry seeds, but you wanna make sure you go light on those because they are calorically dense. I'm gonna go ahead and prep the chicken sausage or turkey sausage, whichever you can find. All right, I'm gonna bag these up and add them to the fridge. And you could certainly be using plastic containers if you wanna be a little more environmentally conscious. And finally, we're gonna whisk up some eggs so that you have them ready to go for a quick breakfast scramble. I add a little bit of milk and salt and pepper to my scrambled eggs. Then you can store this in a container until you're ready to make your breakfast. All right, when you think that your chicken is getting close to done, like maybe 15 minutes out from being done, you're gonna wanna flip it over so we can toast the other side as well. And I'm gonna stick that back in the oven at about 130 to 140 degrees right now, so I know it's gonna take about another 15 minutes. For our pumpkin lentil soup, you're gonna wanna heat up about a tablespoon of olive oil. Once the oil is hot, add your garlic, onion, and carrot that you prepped. Now that the onions are starting to become translucent, you're gonna to wanna to add eight cups of vegetable broth, 29 ounces of pumpkin puree, or two 15 ounce cans, red lentils. Add a teaspoon of ginger and two tablespoons of curry powder. Stir that and then we're gonna bring it to a simmer and let it simmer for 15 minutes. And now our pumpkin lentil soup is ready. You can garnish it with Greek yogurt, paprika, pumpkin seeds, and or green onions. All right, heat up your olive oil at about a medium. Once your oil is heated, add the turkey sausage to the pan. We're gonna cook this for a few minutes to brown the sausages a bit. You can flip this when it starts to brown on one side. Once the sausage has been browned a little bit, we're gonna temporarily remove it Add just a little bit more olive oil to the pan. Now don't go crazy here. We're gonna dump in our garlic, onion, carrot, and celery that we prepped. All right, and you'll want to frequently stir this. We're gonna cook this until the onion is partially translucent, and then the broth is gonna cook it the rest of the way through. All right, now that our onion is partially translucent, we've given it a little bit of a head start I'm gonna go ahead and add the eight cups of either vegetable or chicken broth. All right, you can add your sausage back into there. Add four cups of chickpeas, a teaspoon of oregano, quarter teaspoon of thyme, a little salt and pepper. You can adjust this later. And if you like a little bit of spice, you can add a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Stir this and bring it to a simmer. And we're gonna simmer that for 10 minutes before we add the last ingredients. And after 10 minutes of simmering, we're gonna add two cups of our prepped quinoa, four cups or four large handfuls of kale. We're gonna bring that back to a simmer and let it simmer for another five minutes. Now that it's been cooking for 15 minutes and everything is well done, now your soup is ready. For a roasted sweet potato and beetroot salad, you wanna add some kale and spinach to the bowl. Add sweet potato. Add beets. Again, about as much as you'd like in there. I'm saving some for my hummus. Add the quinoa. Add apple. Add about a quarter cup of crushed pecans. If you'd like, you can add about a quarter cup of dried cranberries. Try to get the least amount of sugar possible. And don't go overboard on this either because they are also pretty calorically dense. For the dressing, add three tablespoons of balsamic, two tablespoons of olive oil, two teaspoons of spicy mustard or deli mustard, three teaspoons of honey. You can do a little less of this if you're worried about the sugar. One teaspoon of cinnamon and a little bit of salt and pepper. And now I just put the lid on. Or if you put this in a bowl, you can just whisk it. 
this is the perfect fall salad. To make the beet hummus, we're going to add a quarter cup of tahini, add the juice of one lemon, and then you're going to want to whip these two ingredients for a couple minutes. And throughout this process, you're going to want to push any of the ingredients that hike up the side back down into the bowl. Add one or two garlic cloves and a half a teaspoon of both cumin and salt. And puree this for another minute. Add one and a quarter cup chickpeas, half cup of beets, a tablespoon of water, and process until smooth, adding another tablespoon or two of water as needed. All right, and there is your beet hummus. A breakfast bowl with a mushroom, spinach, and onion scramble over sweet potatoes, lentils, and quinoa. Whole grain toast with beet hummus, spinach, egg, and everything bagel seasoning. For lunch, roasted sweet potato beetroot salad with leftover curry pumpkin lentil soup. Here is a lunch bowl with spinach, kale, chickpeas, beets, quinoa, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, and our beet hummus. A lunch wrap with the chicken or turkey you made, kale, the apple slaw, and a little bit of beet hummus with a side of the kale chickpea sausage soup. a dinner bowl you can combine ingredients like this. We've got our roasted cauliflower, our roasted sweet potato and beet, our roasted Brussels sprouts, and our chicken. Here's our curried pumpkin lentil soup. So I hope you enjoy prepping all of these delicious fall ingredients. It just smells like fall in here. I'm so excited to eat these recipes throughout the week. It only took us a couple hours, but it's gonna save you a lot of time throughout the week. You'll have healthy, convenient meals conducive to weight loss whenever it's mealtime.